Hey y'all, happy new year. It's that time again. It's time for Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. My name is Deborah, and I'm coming to you from here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks where I like to do all the crafts. I knit, I crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I make jewelry, I do needlework. I'll try any craft once and twice if I like it. I've not yet met a craft that I didn't like. <laughs> Um, I am also a professor at a local university. I am a professor of physics and astronomy where I teach courses in general education. I teach courses to physics majors. I am a docent in our planetarium and I have a research group of students that work in uh, astrophysics research with me. I am also a farmer. I'm a third generation family farmer here on my farm where I raise grass-fed beef cattle. I raise um, heritage poultry. I have horses and I have donkeys and I have a retirement herd of miniature horses, miniature donkeys, a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules the roost and we have Princess Penny the pot-bellied pig. I also have rabbits and as you can tell from my furry little co-host Willie here who everybody's looking forward to seeing, uh, I am fur kid mom to 14 dogs seven indoor cats, and an undetermined number of outside barn cats. So if any or of all of that sounds interesting to you, I hope you'll come on along while we start this new year out just right. We're going to eat us some black-eyed peas and hog gel for good luck, because Lord knows we need it this year on Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. If you're looking for us on social media, you can find me uh, on a farm Facebook page, it's the same as my YouTube channel name. It's Buckthorn Farms. Also, I am on, on, on Instagram and on Ravelry as Doc Firewoman. Uh, and I have started a Facebook group for the podcast. Uh, I am going to try to diversify our... Um, social media this year a little bit because I know there are still some issues with people using Ravelry and we're also branching into different crafts that are not necessarily applicable to Ravelry. So I have started a Facebook group for the podcast and we're also going to try to use hashtags more effectively on Instagram. Um, and there is a Zoom group as well. I'm going to put all that information down below and yes, I'm going to try to do better about keeping up with my information and I'm still podcasting in the kitchen. So we still have the menagerie parade here. Fizzy, move. Come on. All right. <laughs> anyway, I got two dogs in my, fighting over my lap and a cat wanting to lay on my notes. So welcome to the funny farm. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to try to do better about that. If you want an invite to the Facebook group, it's Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal podcast. Um, you just have to answer a couple of questions. Uh, it is a family-friendly group, but be aware, like I says in the question, I am the moderator of it, and y'all know how I feel about things. <laughs> so, I am, uh, as I said on, if you follow me on Twitter, I am unapologetically a liberal snowflake, and so I, you know, I try to keep my opinions to myself everywhere but Twitter, but you just never know where they might pop out, you know. But anyway, so um, this year, I want to talk about this year's make-alongs. We're not going to do as many, and I'm going to, I'm going to post uh, threads for them on Ravelry, but I'm also going to utilize hashtags and utilize the Facebook group for these as well. The first one is, um, for those of you who cross-stitch, we are doing the Long Dog Sampler Pandemic Sampler this year. They came out with a pattern about... April or May of last year. It was free for a period of time. Unfortunately, it's no longer free. It is a huge sampler, and I will show the pattern in my works in progress. But we're doing that. It's not about finishing. Uh, it's just about, you know, working on it. Uh, we work on it on the Zoom group. You can get on there. You can do whatever craft you want on the Zoom group, but there will be occasional days that will say, hey, everybody, let's work on pandemic today. Even if you're not working on it, you can come in anyway. It doesn't matter. But uh, the hashtag for that is going to be DPF Pan Sal, and I'll put that down in the notes also. Uh, the other make-along, the next make-along that we're going to do is the Farm Gal Mal. The Farm Gal Mal means you can make any craft, <laughs> any craft you want to. I don't care. Uh, it, uh, you can do baskets, you can do resin, you can do wood burning, you can bake. I guess, you know, we'll count that as a craft. You can sew. I don't care. Um, it's just about finding joy in your crafting. All right, because that's what ultimately we're here for, right, is to find joy in our crafting. So, um, the Farm Gal Mal, 
I don't care what you work on. As long as you're happy. As long as you're having a good time. Um, kind of like my shirt here. This is Quaylen Stark's um, logo shirt that he had a um, fundraiser for. I love him because he talks about breaking the status quo. Excuse me. He talks about breaking the status quo, and I think that's important, especially right now in our world. We need to break the status quo, and he speaks up, and I think that that's important. He is unashamed of who he is, and he stands up and believes for who he is, and I think that's a great model to live by. He really inspires me, so um, I'm proud of this shirt. Anyway, um, the next one is the No Shame Mal, okay? I don't know how many of y'all beat yourselves up over, you'll be working on stuff and all of a sudden you get a hankering to start something else, but then you kind of guilt yourself into not starting it because you're like, well, I have too many whips or I have that, da, da, da. Sometimes you just need to start that thing to find some fresh inspiration. So there is no shame in starting as many things as you want. That's the philosophy. So, um... You don't have to justify why you start it. You don't have to do anything. So the way I'm going to work this is um, you can make a folder on the Facebook group, a photo album folder that's just of your starts for this year. Um, or even if it's something you've picked up after a long time, it doesn't matter. Um, and then on the Ravelry group, you make one post and you add all, you keep editing the post. So, uh, the hashtag for, oh, I forgot to mention for Farm Gal Mal, it's Farm Gal Mal. For No Shame, it's the No Shame Mal, or No Shame Mal. And I'll put all those down below. Those are our three make-alongs. That's probably all I'm going to do right now. I may add a couple of things uh, as we go, but um, I think I've learned after this past year, man plans and God laughs, I think is the phrase. <laughs> anyway, um... So, yeah. All right. So, let's, what y'all really are here for probably is to know who won some stuff. So, what I did was I drew for every, for prizes from both Chatter Threads and FO Threads. In the Chatter Threads, I awarded pattern prizes. Uh, and in the FO Threads, I awarded yarn prizes. Um, for the most part. Now, for the stash down, but since we're trying to get rid of yarn, I did all patterns. But I drew three people. Uh, so hopefully y'all are okay with that. Um, but if you would rather have yarn, you can let me know. But if you want a pattern prize, or if you would rather have a pattern prize instead of yarn, you can let me know. So you need to contact me either through Ravelry or Instagram. As I look at this list of people, I think most of these people are friends with me on Instagram. Uh, or you can get on the Facebook group um, and contact me. Or you can contact me on in Ravelry. I don't care. Um, just, you know, let me know what pattern you want or, uh, your address so I can send you some yarn. So we're going to start with, um, the, oh, the, how do you eat an elephant? I was actually going to draw another prize for this one and I forgot. Oops, let me do that real quick because there was, there was so much in the chatter. Let me do this real quick. Random number generator. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. Sorry about that, y'all. I knew I forget one. All right. So, in the uh, chatter thread for the how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, and I finished my elephant. Yay. I hope you did too. Um, the chatter thread, the two recipients of the pattern prizes are Allison Roseboom and V. Shaw. Okay. V. Shaw 7. So, y'all can contact me and uh, let me know what patterns you would like. It's uh, up to, we'll say, up to $10 on uh, Ravelry. So, you can pick out a pattern that you would like. Uh, in the FO thread, the winner of the yarn, <laughs> she wins every time. Shirley Knits, one, two, three. You win some yarn for your FO. for that big green uh, blanket that you made, which was really pretty. Okay, for the stash down, um... The winners of the chat and the chatter thread for the pattern and or I just put everything together for this, but there were three winners. I picked Rocky Mountain Penny. So Penny, tell me what pattern you want. Again, Shirley Knits, our first double winner, gets a pattern. And the Carrie Ann, you get a pattern also. So y'all contact me on Ravelry and let me know what pattern you want. Practical Magic Mal, I drew two uh winners. From that, Joe Dadaya, you win some yarn. And Down River Knitter, you win some yarn. So, if y'all will let me know what you would like. In the string along, the um, 
winner for the chatter thread was Seductive Berry. So, Maria, if you will let me know uh, what pattern you would like. And I forgot to draw another winner for this. Boy, I'm not with it, am I? So, all right. Hang on just a second, y'all. Because, you know, nothing like being organized, huh? All right. So, the second winner, random number... In our stooge, in our stooge, and you, after you made that tree skirt, you deserve to win. So, uh, string along, um, Nancy, you win a yarn prize. So, I think I've got your address, but if you would go ahead and send it to me. So, um, all right. So, Seductive Berry wins the pattern. So, Maria, let me know what pattern you want. And uh, in our stooge, Nancy, let me know, or I'll send me your address. I think I've got it, but send it to me anyway. So, I've got it in one place. I'll send you some yarn. Creature Feature, we have our first, our second two-time winner, Rocky Mountain Penny. Rocky Mountain Penny, you win some yarn. I am worth it. I am worth it. We had, I drew two winners out of this because why not? Knit One, Pug Two, you win some yarn. And Leaner, you win some yarn also. Then in the Kidder Getter Done uh, category, Raven Diva, Tyra, you win a pattern. Or if you want me to uh, do something different, you can let me know. But I was going to get you a pattern. Uh, but let me know if you would rather have it off of Etsy. If you would rather have a cross-stitch pattern, let me know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. And then for Science Sprinkles, Sparky136. Patsy, Sparky136, you win a pattern also. So, let me go back through those names again. I've got Allison Roseboom, Vshaw7. You both choose patterns. Shirley Knits, you win some yarn. Rocky Mountain Penny, you win a pattern. Shirley, you also won a pattern. The Carrie Ann wins a pattern. Joe Dadaya wins some yarn. Down River Knitter wins some yarn. So y'all send me your addresses. Seductive Berry, you get a pattern. Nancy, in our stooge, you get some yarn. Uh, Rocky Mountain Penny, you also get some yarn. Knit One Pug too. Krista, you get some yarn. Leaner, you get some yarn. Raven Diva, you get a pattern. And Sparky136, Patsy, you get a pattern. Yay! We like winning. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that supported the podcast. I know that it was pretty haphazard this past year, and I'm going to try to do better this year. Uh, I think it gives it's it's brought me joy getting to know all of you guys, and I feel refreshed and invigorated about the podcast this year after the year we've had. I, my crafting mojo is definitely back. I've made quite a few things that I'm going to share with you. So I'm hoping to keep that momentum going forward into the new year. So uh, I hope to see y'all uh, around in the Zoom group or on Instagram or in the Facebook group or in Ravelry, wherever, wherever you want to meet up. So um, yeah, so we're going to move on now and talk about finished objects. Right, Willie? Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, some of the things that I have made have been gifted. Um, if you watched Vlogmas, you saw some of the sewing that I had been doing. Um, I made um, net gaiters for all the kids at the barn out of rainbow fleece for us to wear for the uh, flag show performance. Um, so if I remember, I'll stick a picture of those in if I can find one. Um, I also made a uh, suit bowl cozies or, or bowl coasters or they're called different things. Um, I followed a tutorial by Crafty Gemini on YouTube and I made some of those. They're very easy to make and they were a big hit. So I'll put a picture of those in here. Um, last but not least, I finished and framed the Let's Gallop piece um, for Marianne and um, gave that to her at the flag show. So I will put a picture in here of the finished um, framed piece for you to admire. <laughs> it's a home framing job, so don't look at it too closely, right? But she was very pleased with that. And I actually want to make that pattern for myself. I still have plenty of thread. And it's a fairly quick stitch. Um, it's a fairly quick stitch, so uh, I wouldn't feel bad about it. No shame. No shame starting it. Okay, so uh, that's some of the things that I have already given to their, their new homes. But um, if you watched Vlogmas, one of the things that I did is I made myself a whole bunch of cloth napkins. This is about half the stack here of the cloth napkins that I made because I'm going to try to get in the habit of um, using less 
less, using less, right? Um, trying to reduce the amount of plastic that I use, try to re reduce the amount of paper that I use and try to recycle everything that I can or find multiple uses for things. Uh, repurpose things, reuse things, fix things instead of buying new. Uh, some of y'all followed the saga of my kitchen stove. <laughs> It's working right now. Knock on wood. Oh, my Lord, it's working. Let's not jinx it. Nobody look at it too hard or it'll get mad and quit. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, I made... I these were just from stash fabric that I had. Um, you know, these were all fabrics that I'd probably had. Some of them were a little bit newer, but a lot of them I brought with me when I moved home. And they're 16 years old, so it's, you know, you can talk about, oh, I need to save that fabric because it's so nice and I have a project in mind. Honey, if I ain't made it in 16 years, let's do something with it, right? That's the philosophy. So, um, these are part of the ones I made. I also made some more beeswax wraps. Uh, you can watch Vlogmas and see those. If you want to know how to make those, I talk about those instead of plastic wrap. I made myself a bunch of those and also made some to give away. Okay, so um, as far as um, knitting goes, I have a couple or a few finished items here. The first thing that I will show is this is a uh, little one skein wonder shawlette or scarf or whatever you want to call it. This is a pattern called Thousand, A Thousand Kisses, and uh, it's by C.J. Brady. C.J. Brady is one of my favorite crochet designers because she has a lot of, if you've got like that single skein that you bought and you don't quite know what to do with it, she has a lot of patterns that would be perfect for that. And her patterns are reasonably priced. Um, she is on Instagram as C.J. Brady. She's also on Ravelry as C.J. Brady. Um, this is in Huloco Cinnamon. This was a gift from Vanessa from the A Historian Knits podcast, the yarn was. So, um, I wanted to make this up. So, a Thousand Kisses. I think that's a reference to Outlander, maybe. I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, so I love this very quick little uh, one skein wonder. And in fact, in my want to make things uh, coming up, I have another one of her patterns. The next one is a hat kit that Christy sent me. Now, I don't have the... Uh, I want to make a pom-pom um, to put on, on the top of this, Okay. I want to make a pom-pom to put on top of this, but this is the Solstice hat. This is actually a pattern from the Calypso Heritage Farm, and this is their yarn. This is their Shetland yarn. The blue is hand-spun, and then the white is mill-spun. And if you look at the blue, it's actually got sparkles in it. Okay, this was a very fast knit, but you got to learn how to do this braid. And I really enjoyed making this. It didn't, it maybe took me a couple of days and that's because I was working on other stuff. You could conceivably make this hat in one day. Uh, they have kits still available on their website for this hat. It's the Calypso Farm uh, up in uh, Alaska. And so if I remember, and I'm going to remember, I will try to put a link to their uh, website down below. So anyway, so the Solstice hat from Calypso Farms. Okay, um, the next thing is one of my Shave Them to Save Them projects. I haven't put the pom-pom on it yet. This is the Orion Mesh Beanie by Kalisha Ryan or uh, Nadir Tani uh, from the Quirky Monday podcast. Uh, this is a, a really fast pattern to make. It's customizable for as long as you want to make it. So if you want to make it more slouchy, you can, or you can make it more fitted. I made it a, with a little bit of slouch because sometimes I wear my hair up in a bun. This yarn is Tunis yarn. It's one of the Shave em to Save em yarns. This is Tunis yarns available from Solitude Wool. And I'll try to remember to put their uh, website too. This is one of the Shave em to Save em qualifying yarns. Uh, this is one of their Tunis, and this colorway is called Colored Pencils. And I think it's really interesting how it pooled. It kind of looks like lightning bolts to me. But anyway, and then I had just a little bit yes left over. So in the interest of using all the yarn, I made myself a pom-pom. And the way I attach my pom-poms, and the reason this, is, isn't, this one isn't on yet, is somebody's getting them a drink. Peachy's getting her a drink. Is I um, tie, I put it through the the little strings through, and I tie a button to it so I can take it off if I want to sew it, uh, wash it. So this is a qualifying shave them to save them project. I'm trying to get uh, ten breeds done so that I can qualify for the prizes. 
Okay, the last fibery thing that I will show, and I have one more little thing I want to do for this, but I finished my changes shawl. Yes, I did. The changes shawl is a pattern by Mina Phillip, the Knitting Expat, and this is a huge, huge shawl but I love it. It has a really unusual, interesting construction, but the knit is very simple. The knitting part is, is quick and simple, and I really like that about it because it's, it's interesting enough to keep your interest, but it's not so um, difficult that you can't visit with people while you're knitting. Um, this is when you podcast in here, this, you get all the animals, right? Yes. So, um, yeah, I started this in 2018, <laughs> and I let it sit. Move, move, move. Move. No, no, complain. I let it sit for a long time, and then I picked it up and finished it. Um, it's, yeah, it's a, it took one, two full skeins of 460 yards each, and I ran out, because I'm a loose knitter, but I ran out of that, and then it took a 10 different minis, and there was just a very little bit left of those. So what I'm gonna do with what I have left is I'm gonna make a beaded tassel because these ends are pointed, and I think they would look nice with a beaded tassel on the end of them. But this is a really beautiful shawl. I think the construction is super interesting, and I would highly recommend it if you want something big and unusual. Okay, uh, this yarn is Kimmery Knit Knacks. The gray is steel, and then she had some rainbow mini packs. And unfortunately, we lost Kim this past year, uh, so we're very heartbroken about that. Um, East Texas Fiber Festival did a really nice tribute to her. She's a very sweet lady, and I'm just very sad that she's no longer with us. But um, she dyed beautiful yarn, and I have quite a bit of her yarn. So I'm, I'm looking forward to finding the right special projects for that. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's the Change of Shawl by uh, Mina Phillip. Now, um, I have one stitching FO. It is not a fully finished object yet, and it has been wadded up in a bag, so it looks a little um, awful. <laughs> uh, but this is the Fright Night Sal from Fat Quarter Shop. Fright Night Sal from Fat Quarter Shop. This was their Halloween stitch along, uh, and I finished it late, of course, but... Um, yeah, I made a couple of mods on it. The moon was supposed to be white and I decided to make it yellow and then I used blending filament. Uh, I used blending filament in the um, gold blending filament in the moon and then I used glow in the dark blending filament, white blending filament for the um, spider web and for the ghost and then I used orange glow in the dark filament for the windows in the house. I have a plan for this. I don't know if it's gonna work but I bought some large uh, pumpkin shaped wood cutouts. And I think what I wanna do is paint those or use colored pencils on those. And then I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna cut it out, put some batting behind it, and then glue it down and put trim around it on that, just for something different, you know, just a different finish. So we'll see, I've got them, they're back there. I need to actually get them fixed up but yeah so those are my finished objects for um since the last time we visited so now we're going to move on and talk about whips okay so i must do, start with uh knitting and crochet whips i'm having crochet things started right now but i'm going to start with knitting and crochet whips in my kitty cat bag by april nine designs um i have my twizzler socks the Twizzler socks are a free pattern available on Ravelry. These were, I started these for the grenade creations for Kirsty's um, Halloween sock along. And after Halloween passed, I just kind of sat them down and didn't pick them back up, which that was just too bad. Um, I am knitting these in Andromeda sock yarn. Uh, it's a colorway called Witching Hour, which I thought was appropriate for some Halloween socks. And I am almost ready to mark for my heel. I'm gonna do an afterthought heel in these. This is a very simple uh, pattern to do. So if you need something that's not vanilla, but almost vanilla, I would recommend this. My little progress keeper is the Bunique by Charmed and Dangerous, because y'all know I love her stuff. All right, so um, this is where I was when I last showed them. So I did get this far. I'm almost ready to mark for my heel, I think. 
Uh, so I'll mark for those. The toe is just some leftover. I think it's Malabrigo, but I'm not positive. Uh, I don't know. Don't care. <laughs> anyway, so um, yeah. So these are the Twizzler socks. So yeah, try to get those finished. Uh, I don't know about my, I'm trying to be a better sock knitter. Boy, I thought I was a convert and then I kind of fell off the wagon after Halloween. But maybe not. I'm not dreading finishing them, so maybe that's a good sign. <laughs> I'm working on it, y'all. I really am. Um, this was a bag that was a gift from um, Maria last year, and it's got a copious amount of cat hair on. It's got little witchy things all over it. Um, I am making the Horfrost Cow by Maria from Ninja Chickens podcast, who I think is a wonderful, adorable human being, and I love her so much. Um, but the Horfrost Cowl came out late last winter, I think, and it is a color work cowl. I am knitting this out of a uh, Chicken Coop Dye Works. This is her Tweety yarn base. It's called Chicky, and this is called Ice and Snow, and this is Poinsettia. Uh, I thought those would look well together, and so I am on row, I think about 25 or so. No, 27. 20, I'm getting ready to start 28, or I'm working on 28, maybe. Uh, but anyway, so this is um, a color work cowl. It's kind of wadded up there, but you can see looks better from further away. <laughs> the thing I like about it is there's no long floats in the pattern. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it should look should look pretty good when it's done. I'm excited. Again, being kind of a loose knitter, my color work doesn't pop like a lot of people's does until I wash it. So, yeah. So, this is the uh, Horfrost Cowl by Maria from Ninja Chickens. And I need to probably get to trucking on this and get it finished. It's 60 rows, so I'm not quite, not quite halfway. So, what happens is when you get halfway, the gray becomes the background and the red will be the design. So, you reverse the colors. So, it'll be pretty when it's done. Okay. So there's that, get that finished. I figure if I can do a color work cowl, then doing a yoke on a sweater is not that much harder, right? Okay, so the last project is the one I've been focusing all my attention on of late. This is in a Me Made bag. I bought this panel of fabric off of uh, fabric.com. And then somebody gave me a lot of these scraps that I've made. This is like for big projects. This is also uh, Maria's pattern from Ninja Chickens. This is the Fleece Flight Shawl. The Fleece Flight is a shawl she designed to showcase uh, rare breed yarns. And um, the, the proceeds from it benefit the Livestock Conservancy. And this pattern came out before the Shave Them to Save Them project, but it is a perfect pattern for that uh, project because it showcases all these rare breeds. Uh, and it's like a flight, as in a flight of beers or something, if you went to a beer tasting. So you can sort of sample uh, the different breeds. Um, so I am on the fifth of, I'm making the large version. There's three different sizes you can make. I am making the largest one. Um, I am on the fifth section out of six. And it is a huge shawl and it's worsted. So it's gonna be very warm, but it's knit on large needles. So it makes it loose and kind of airy. So it's kind of hard to tell a lot about it. My needles cable is almost too short, but you can kind of see there this, the construction of it. All right, so, um, oops, got yarn going everywhere here. All right, so just to kind of, um, show you what's in here. With the shave them to save them, you have to use, there's a minimum um, weight you have to use. I think it's four ounces. So uh, this is a perfect thing for this though, because each one of these sections takes about that much. So this first yarn is Kloon Forest, and this is from Left Hand Wool Company. Then this section is, this is all one yarn. This is the different colors of sheep and they hand spun it together. This is Jacob from Havencroft Farms here in Arkansas. And then I ran out, so I used a little bit of the Kloon Forest to fill in the gap. Then this blue is Caracool from uh, Solitude Wool, and I marled it with the Kloon Forest until I ran out of the Kloon Forest. 
and then I knit with the blue and I ran out. And then this was some Stash Shetland. So this actually doesn't qualify, but it was a gift from a friend. So I wanted to use it. So this is Shetland. Then the next section is Cotswold from Ross Fiber Farms. Okay, Cotswold. And then in this next section, I've just begun it. I'm using the red, but I'm also using a um, Gulf Coast native from Stringtown Farms. Okay, so that'll get Clean Forest, Jacob, Caracool, Cotswold, Gulf Coast native. And then the last yarn that I'm going to use is not a Shaven with Savem yarn, but it is a rare breed. It's Perindale, and this is also from Stringtown um, farm or it's Phoenix farm fiber, excuse me. Phoenix farm fiber is, uh, who made the Gulf coast native. And then this is Perindale. This doesn't qualify for shaving to save them, but it's a rare breed anyway. Um, but, but these all, the rest of these, except for the red do. So that'll get me five breeds, um, there. Plus I've got Tunis already done. I've got black Welsh mountain already done and I've got Lester long wool and I ordered some hog Island and some horn Dorset and I have some Lincoln long wool, also, so I'll get my 10 that way. I just got to get the projects finished. But this is a very fast knit, and it's an easy, it's just knitting. Now, you do have short rows, but you're just using them to shape, and so you don't have to pick up the wraps, which is nice. Uh, but the proceeds from this pattern go to benefit the Livestock Conservancy, so I can get behind that. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, Shave Them to Save Them ends at the end of 2021. So, I want to try to get all my stuff done so that I can qualify for my... Uh, prizes. I had some Cotswold left over. <laughs> I had some Cotswold left over. So I'm going to put fringe on this, on the two triangular ends. So I'm going to put fringe on it because I like fringe. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, my prog my stitch marker here is by DK Graham. And then uh, I had another Noel charm on this for my Progress Keeper. This is her little Frankenstein's Monster Unicorn. Or Narwhal, excuse me. So, because you know I love the Narwhals. Okay, so those are my, my yarn um, whips. So, now we're going to talk about stitching whips. There's quite a few more stitching whips because I get excited and I start things. <laughs> okay, the first one is, um, these are in all in, or most of these are in April 9 Designs bags. Um, she makes some beautiful cross-stitch bags. This is the Animal Almanac Sal uh, by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. I quit it in June and never picked it back up. So now I am working on July. Now the reason it's wrinkled is I actually got a stain on it and had to wash it. So this is the Animal Almanac Stitch Along that was last year's Stitch Along, one of last year's Stitch Alongs from Frosted Pumpkin. And I'm almost done with the July block. I'm about probably, I would say 66% of the way done, two thirds of the way done on it. So yeah. So that will be, uh, I'm going to do this, I think, is like a giant bell pull, like those old wall calendars that you used to use. This is all stitched in DMC floss with the call for colors. Um, there is some uh, etoile, DMC etoile, and then there's also some treasure braid. No, this one doesn't have treasure braid on it. I'm lying. That's the next one. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, these. this is the animal almanacs. you got a penguin and a fox and a frog and a bunny rabbit and a hippo and a panda and a doggy, and I think there's still, there's a koala, and a deer, and a cat, I can't remember what the rest of them are, but anyway, so, uh, that is my longest standing, uh, whip, the next one is also a frosted pumpkin, again, it's in a, a April 9 designs bag, this was their Chinese Zodiac stitch along, and again, I quit it at about, not quite halfway, <laughs> The summer hit, and I just kind of went, blah. All right, so this is Chinese Zodiac Stitch Along. It is complete now. So um, it's got the animals of the Chinese Zodiac on it. This does have treasure braid in it, and then an etoile, and then DMC, and the called for colors. And these are both on 14 count. Both this and the Animal All Neck are on 14 count that was supplied in the kit from Frosted Pumpkin. I'm a sucker for a kit. Y'all know this about me. So, um, anyway, so there's that. Okay. All right. Uh, the next one is the biggie. This is long dog. Okay. 
long dog samplers. Got to be careful how you say that. Uh, pandemic sampler. I have never made one of their samplers, but I have admired them from afar. This was free for a little while, but it's no longer free. I think it's about $22 to $25 now, I think. I can't remember, but it's available at your local needle workshop, I'm sure, or um, on their website. This is, um, we started on them last night. I am stitching this on 28 count, two over two. The fabric is a color called Wood Violet. It's 28 count Jobelin, and it's a color called Wood Violet. And then I'm stitching it with, I'm going to use this variegated floss by DMC. It's called the Colorist Floss for called um, Canadian Nights for everything except I got the idea from Penny to do the animals in solid colors. So I'm going to find solid colors that match. And then Tyra was sweet enough to make most of us that are meeting up to do this on the Zoom group, make us all these sweet little needle minders with our names on it. So that was really sweet of her to do. So uh, this is a huge piece. Uh, it is finished. It's, I think, 26 by 30. So it's and on, and on a 14 count state. And I am not hoss enough to do this on linen. No way. I, I, I do this under a magnifier. I've got my aunt light with my magnifier. And I just ordered myself a Lowry stand to clamp this to so that I can stitch two-handed. Um, but, yeah. Pandemic. Now, the thing about this, if you are into this pattern, uh, there is a Facebook group for this pattern. And they have a lot of modifications that people have done. And they share them freely. So you can go in the album and look at how people have modded the pattern. And that's what all these notes are on here is I'm making some changes. Like there was one for the healthcare heroes. I'm adding that. And then there's um, there's uh, one for RBG. And there's one for Black Lives Matter. And one for Kobe Bryant and the Australian wildfires. And those are things that I want to remember. You know, this is a heritage piece for me. I don't know who's going to get it, but I'm making it. And so, you know, <laughs> I'll make sure and put it in my will. Don't y'all give that away for $5 or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so we're this is what we're doing our stitch along of. So if you want to get in on it, the pattern is available on Long, Long Dog Samplers uh, website. And you can join in. You start. It's not about finishing. It's just about the joy of the journey, right? That's what we're telling ourselves anyway. All right. Um, let's do this one next. I am still, I got off track on this. Have you ever made something and it just fought you the entire time? I am working on, still working on Miss Betsy's pillowcases. This is a, a Busilla kit that I found at a thrift store, and I don't know where the picture is gone, but it's a, mag, a Magnolia Bloom. I finished the first one, no problem, got it done. This one has fought me every step of the way, and I don't know why. If this is on an old stand that I got at a thrift store. Uh, this has fought me and fought me, and I don't know why I'm having trouble with it, but um, I just had to put it in time out. So uh, this is all I've gotten done on it so far. It's a fair, it's stamp cross stitch. It should be a fairly quick stitch. I don't know why it was giving me such a headache the other day, but um, we'll pick it back up at some point and work on it. I'm one of these people that I'll start a whole bunch of stuff, and then I'll get in the mood to finish stuff. So I'll start picking up stuff and finish, 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 finish. That's kind of why I'm down. I don't have any long-standing fiber whips anymore. Everything that was started prior to last year is done. So all those are my only three fiber whips right now. And I'm really proud of myself. So, um, I can't, I swear. Okay. Um, the next one is a little Mill Hill kit that I bought years ago. It's on perforated paper. And I haven't really put much time in on this, so I haven't made a lot of progress since the last time you saw it. But progress is progress is progress, right? Doesn't matter. No shame here. You just work on it when you feel like. So, um, yeah. So, that's as far as I am on that. So this was just a kit. It came with all the it came with all the stuff. So we're working on that. This is a, a, again in one of Charlotte's bags. She makes some different styles. This is one of her square bags. All right, then this bag is not one of Charlotte's. It is made by um, So Much to Love. 
This was the very first cross stitch project bag that I ever bought because you know, you gotta have all the bags, right? This is the um, Thistle Stitches from Sky, Isle of Sky Crafts. This is the little bell pull. Bought this last time I was in Scotland, which was 2002. And I am over halfway done on this now. So uh, it is just a nice repetitive, I was talking to Ashley about black work. I've never done black work, but she said she likes the repeating, the tessellated patterns. It's very soothing. And I like this too, because it's the same thing. So I'm on the fourth of six of these designs here. So um, yeah, so we'll get that done sometime soon, eventually. <laughs> I found out that Amazon Prime is streaming Top Gear again for for if you have the membership, so yay. And so I was sitting here the other day um, working on this, watching Top Gear. So yeah, not not after the James and May and Richard Hammond and Jeremy Clarkson left, Top Gear ceased to exist. That's some weird thing that should have been burned in a fire after that. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> opinionated me. Um, all right. I have not worked on this in a while, but this was, I started when Vanessa had her private garden sale. I was not familiar with their patterns, but I purchased one and I thought it was beautiful. This is the Farm Quaker by Jardin Privé. I don't have a, a good picture of it that's not just the pattern, but it is a Farm Quaker and I've got the center motif done and I had done the beehive and I messed it up, so I pulled it out and that made me mad and I kind of quit it. So I need to pick that back up. I'm doing this on 28 count over two. This is called um, lamb, lamb's wool, I think. This was from one, two, three stitch. And that wood violet was also from one, two, three stitch. So I've got the center motif done. Uh, that's as far as I've gotten on that. I am stitching that with uh, the Gentle Arts um, sampler threads. And this is Buckeye Scarlet. I wanted something that wasn't just a straight color, so I got these over dyed flosses, so. All right. And that is in a me made bag out of some fabric that was gifted to me by Mary. That's a periodic table. <laughs> I love me some periodic table. All right, and then the last one, because I don't have enough stitch alongs going on, Vanessa said, hey, have you seen the Lindy Stitches stitch along? No. It's called Funky Menagerie, and it, it just started yesterday. Um, so I am doing it mostly in the called for colors. I've made a couple of little modifications because I didn't have the colors that I needed. I had everything, but just one or two. I think it was the pinks that I didn't have. So I got as close as I could to these. This is Lindy Stinch's Funky Menagerie Sal, and it's got unusual animals. This is stitched on 28 count. This fabric is Be Stitch Me. Uh, this is from their Fabric of the Month Club, and this is a colorway called Lotus. It's kind of a purpley, grayish, purple color. All right, and then um, I forgot to tell y'all who the minders were from, but I love this one. That one is from Top Knot Stitcher Shop. So, anyway, and that is in a bag that uh, Junie, for B or Junie sent me. It's a skinny Lemonx bag, and I just thought it was a nice size to store stuff in, so... Yay. All right. That, y'all, <laughs> is all my whips for right now. For right now. We may start some other stuff. But no shame. No shame. All right. So, we're going to move on and talk about future crafting right quick. Okay. So, for future crafting, I've said it every year. But it's going to happen today. In this bag that Kirsty made, Grenade Creations, I swatched, and now I am ready to cast on a flax, which is by Tin Can Knits. I've printed the pattern out 40,000 times. Can't lay my hand on it right now. But I'm doing it in Wool of the Andes. And this is Mineral Heather. It's kind of a blue, gray, a grayish blue, I guess you would call that. I've swatched for it. I know I'm on gauge. We gonna pull the trigger on it today. I'm tired of waiting. So I'm going to cast it on today. That's going to be my New Year's Day cast on, right? In this bag, my Peapod Creations or Peapod Threads. This was a gift from Vanessa. Also is a gift from Vanessa. Woolberry Fiber Company. 
This is a colorway called Golden Pineapple. I think Vanessa gave me this. I'm going to do another one of CJ Brady's shawls. I have several of her patterns. They're great one skein shawls or one skein shawlettes. I don't know which one I'm going to do. I had it narrowed down to a couple. So I'm going to um, cast on or hook on, whatever, start hooking. <laughs> that don't sound right. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to start that. This is, uh, yeah, Simple Sock by Woolberry Fiber Company. So there's that. And then because I don't have enough stitching whips, I've got several things I want to make, but I want to make myself a Let's Gallop. I still have plenty of um, thread. I just need to get fabric. I think I've got fabric that will work. I just need to go back there and look. But I want to do myself a Let's Gallop since I gave Marianne that one that I made. And... I want to start the Dracula's Confession by Lindy Stitches. I have all the fret threads. I have the fabric that I want to use. Excuse me. I don't know what's going on with me today. Sorry. Um, but I want to do the vertical version of it, I think. Um, I think I like that the best. So, yeah. I want to start that eventually. Also, I want to make myself some new pajama pants. So, I've got four fabrics back there, two fleece and two flannel. And I bought these patterns. So, we're going to try to cut out some pajama pants. So, that ain't much in, in future crafting, but it's enough. Don't y'all think I got enough irons in the fire? No, no shame. No shame. And what you want to do, right? We're going to make whatever we want to make because it's not hurting nobody. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk about action. Okay, if you watched Vlogmas, you saw all these beautiful gifts that I was so, so fortunate to get from various people. I got ornaments, I got candy, I got, get, you know, yarn and cross-stitch stuff and bags and pajama pants and, and just wonderful, thoughtful people um, that I have met through this podcast. This bag was custom made for me. Maria uh, Seductive Berry had this made for me. Now, what I wanted to show y'all was a little bit different uh, than normally I would do. I want to kind of showcase um, some of my favorite, not all my favorite, but some of my favorite uh, makers. So I want to start with Noelle from Charmed and Dangerous. This is a um, custom charm that Maria had made for me. It's a canning jar with a little jalapeno pepper on it. Um, Noelle makes adorable charms. And they are very sturdy, I will say. They are, they are very sturdy. So she is um, one of my favorite makers as far as progress keepers. Her and DK Graham and String Theory Color Works are the ones that I usually buy my stuff from. Um, also, as far as bag makers go, I love April 9 Designs, and y'all know this. Uh, these are some bags that I recently got from her. These are her, um, I don't know what that is stuck to that. Not much telling. These are her medium size bags. Um, and these are bags that I recently got from her at, over the last two or three months because I'm a sucker for a cute fabric. And I could, I mean, that's a beekeeping cat. How could you pass that up? And I thought this rabbit fabric was really cute. Um, so I love her bags. Now, another um, stitch along that I bought the kit for is the uh, Christmas wreath sal. Tyra and Jessica both are doing it with me. It's a Christmas wreath sal by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. So I went ahead and purchased the kit with the fabrics and the buttons, and I even got the little needle minder. I haven't started it yet. Uh, I, I promise that I will start it by Valentine's Day. All right. Uh, and then another thing, and I had never, you know, things have changed a lot. When I started cross stitching when I was in high school, things have changed a lot, you know, in terms of what's out there, just like with, with knitting. I'm sure those of y'all who've been knitting for many years are like, man, things are really different than they used to be, um, which I think that's cool. There's so much more cool, cute stuff out there and the accessibility to patterns is much greater. Um, but I decided I would join a fabric of the month club. You saw one of the fabrics on my Lindy Stitches. These are my fabrics. I just thought I would show these really quickly from Be Stitch Me. These are her fabric of the months that you can sign up for. And she gives you a choice 
of the size and the um, count and the fabric type. So this is her Brights Club. Now I was looking on her website, she used to have a Brights and a Neutrals, but I didn't see the option anymore, so I don't know if she's combined them. But these are some of her Brights Club colorways. It's kind of a greenish purple. This is kind of a gold. And then this is the one, I'm, I'm gonna do Dracula's Confession, I think, on this one. Although now that I look at it, I'm kind of wondering if I shouldn't do it on this one. <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, I had never done a, a, anything like that before, so I thought it was a neat experience. And then I was gifted five skeins of this sport weight undyed yarn. Um, this is Cascade 220. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this. I have some ideas. We'll see. I don't know if I'm gonna dye it or leave it natural. We'll see. But anyway, so there's my bag of fun acquisitions for right now. I'm, there are many more, but you can watch Vlogmas and see most of those. So now we're going to leave the crafty stuff and move on to a little bit of science. And then farm life is going to be a live clip outside while I'm charging the tractor and then final thoughts. Well, what's going on in the science world? There's a lot we could talk about. I don't even know where to start, y'all. I'm not going to talk about the COVID virus because what else is to say about that? But um, we start back the Tuesday after Martin Luther King Day. I am going to be teaching from home again until I'm able to get a vaccine. Um, I am going to be teaching from home. Um and that's just the way it's got to be. There's just, it's just not worth the risk, in my opinion. And I have pr pretty well limited where I go. I go to the feed store. I go to the grocery store. I go to the barn. And I mask up everywhere I go. And I try to social distance everywhere I go. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. So, um, there won't, I don't think we're doing planetarium shows again. We're still not able to have school groups and stuff like that. Um, but so that is, you know, that's unfortunate. But on the upside, my student Grace is doing great in her internship and she won intern of the year at UCA, which was wonderful. Uh, she won intern of the year at UCA and because she is on her second NASA internship, I have spent the first part of my holiday break writing uh, recommendation letters for her for graduate programs. So I'm excited to see when she hears back from some of those. Um, we had the big conjunction we were talking, everybody was talking about. I hope you had a chance to go out and see that. Um, and so that was kind of fun. You know, in terms of me getting ready for classes, I'm just trying to take a page out of what I've learned about what works for my students and what doesn't. Um, I think I was a little too hands-off in one of my classes, and I think I'm going to have to be more hands-on uh, for them to be. I mean, they were successful, but I just kind of felt like I didn't give them the best experience that I could have. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more hands-on this semester. Um, so that's kind of about, I mean, there's not a lot to say right now about that kind of stuff. Uh, but I thought what would be interesting is this is not exactly science, but it's pretty close. You know, I'm sitting over here and looking at my crock pot that's got black eyed peas and hog jowl in it. And everybody has foods that they're supposed to eat on New Year's Day that's supposed to bring luck. And I was like, well, why do we eat black eyed peas? It's a Southern thing, I guess, if you want to say that. Sometimes it's called Hoppin' John. Um, Hop and John usually is spicy, I think, but, um, it's supposed to bring us prosperity in the new year. So that was something that, you know, my family wasn't particularly celebratory of holidays, but that is something we did try to do every year. And, um, sometimes you also include like collard greens or, cabbage or mustard greens. In fact, I've got some uh, turnip greens I may cook uh, stir fry to eat with this. The reason, one of the reasons that black eyed peas are used is they puff up when you cook them. They swell when you cook them. So that's abundance and prosperity. And then of course, the green symbolizes money. And then the pork, which are pigs, 
pigs root forward, right? They root forward with their nose and that, sep that, that represents positive motion. And then if you eat cornbread with it, the gold also represents, the gold color of the cornbread represents gold money, right? So all these positive aspects. So I thought, you know, why, I mean, believe it or don't, believe in things like magic or luck or uh, serendipity or whatever, or don't, that's up to you. You know, I choose to believe there there is some value to that stuff. Even though I'm a scientist, I choose to believe that. So I decided, you know, I decided I make a pot of, pot of black eyed peas and hong jowl on New Year's Day. And I will cook me some turnip greens and I will make me some cornbread. And that's what we're going to eat. Because first of all, it's pretty darn good eating. Bob Barker's barking at one of the cats. His real name is Teddy, but I started calling him Bob Barker because he barks. <laughs> anyway, so I thought I would share with y'all why we eat the black eyed peas and the hog gel on New Year's Day. So we're going to move on and talk about farm life. Well, one of the things I'm going to try to do this year with the podcast is do a few little vlog segments because people seem to really like those when I do vlogmas or vlogist. Um, so... I thought that what I would do is maybe as I'm doing things around the farm or doing things crafting wise, make a little video. So right now what I'm doing is waiting on my tractor battery <laughs> to charge up. This tractor is notoriously cold natured. Uh, so when it gets below like 40 degrees, it doesn't want to start. And so I have to put it on the battery charger. Um, so what's going on on the farm right now is mostly we're just trying to survive. <laughs> Um, we've had hard rain for two days. Luckily, we're on a hill, so we don't have to worry about flooding, but it is incredibly muddy right now. And it's not super cold, but the cold and the wet make it difficult on the animals. Um, so I'm feeding hay. I'm going to run out of hay probably if I'm counting right about the end of January. Even though I bought more hay than I normally do, I've been trying to feed more too. Um... As my dad or my grandpa always said, you can't starve a profit out of something. So I don't try to skimp on my animals, especially the hay, because that's what keeps them warm. Um, right now, all my horses are at home. I brought them home after the Christmas program over at the barn. So they're all home right now. And I'm probably going to keep them home until about the middle of January. I'll take Bow and Flame back first. I don't know when the lessons start for the kids, but Gusty won't need to go back until they start. And I'm not going to take Trixie back until about March because trying to get over to the barn at 7 a.m. in January is going to be incredibly cold. <laughs> Although, knock on wood, winter has not been too severe so far, thankfully for us. Um, you know, but that could change on a dime. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I'm planning for the garden for this, this year. Um... I want to make some more raised beds, and I also want to do better about my seed starting. So to that end, one of my projects for this coming week is going to be to get my little green mini greenhouse set up. Now, the room I had it in last year, it did not work out very well because it doesn't get enough light in there, and I kind of would forget to go check on things. So I need it to be somewhere where it's easily accessible. So to that end, I'm going to probably end up putting it in my bedroom which means I'm going to have to tie it to the wall to keep the cats from climbing up it to turn it over. Um, but I want to go ahead and get started with some green, early spring greens. I've got seeds for um, bok choy and some different greens that I want to start. So I'm probably going to get those started. Um, I'm going to need to check the signs to see when's a good time to start. Uh, the other thing I need to do is spray my fruit trees. Um, I spray with organic sprays. I try not to use anything synthetic, um, like 2,4-D and that kind of stuff. When you smell that, you know it's probably not good for you or anything else. Um, but I need to spray a fungicide. I've got, I noticed my nectarine tree is starting to get buds on it. And I know you need to spray before bud break on those nectarines. Um, so I've got some organic fungicide. I also need to spray dormant oil. The other thing I need to do is spray my quince. My quince got a 
some sort of a uh, fungal uh, blight this year, and it was bad. I thought I was going to lose both of them, but they seem to have survived. I'm going to prune them back hard and then uh, spray them well. Um, I've left the garden. To cl I've cleaned it up a little bit, but I'm leaving it for some cover for the for the beneficial insects to overwinter. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of cleaning up in it until probably March. Um, I've done a little bit because I have started um, filling up the beds with more compost. I need to strip the two smaller rabbit coop, rabbit coops, chicken coops, and fill those up. Uh, so far, we've only got one baby born in this round. Uh, usually, they'll start popping about the end of January, beginning of February. We had one early one this year. So, that is, you know, a start. It's a little girl. Um, I had some video of it during Vlogmas, so, or Vlogmas, so some of y'all saw her. But that's pretty much what's going on here on the farm. Um, my main goal for this year is to continue to improve my garden and to... Um, also improve my riding you know i have gotten that's you know that's one of the one upshot of the of working from home in this pandemic situation is we were able to start trixie under saddle and do it all of ourselves do it all ourselves and that was really good so uh, i want to continue work pushing forward on that kind of stuff um but yeah i mean i don't make new year's resolutions as such there's this not this whole new year new me thing <laughs> Just, you know, we do what we need to do, right? Um, so I just want to continue to improve my garden and improve my fruit tree situation. Um, if you didn't watch Vlogmas, I planted uh, two Mayhaws, two Mulberries. One's a Black Mary Bell one Mulberry, one's a Paper Mulberry. And then I planted um, a Wild Plum. So those are new to the setup. And I hope to continue to, I've got some muscadines that I, I grew from starts. I'm going to try to put those out. And I also got a couple more Carolina buckthorns, so I'm hoping to put those out as well. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. I need to do some research on the USDA uh, grant for the, for the greenhouses and see what the situation is there, if that program is still even available. I could call my USDA office person, I guess, and ask her. Um, anyway, so that's pretty much an update of what's going on on the farm. So uh, we'll come back with a few final thoughts. Okay, so for final thoughts today, I want to kind of talk about, you know, I'm not real big into this whole new year, new me thing. I try to constantly work on who I am. And there was a really good piece. It's uh, by the author is Maya Luna, and it's from Omega: The Feral Secrets of the Deep Feminine. It's a piece from that book, and it was posted on Facebook. And I thought I would share that with you guys. So, and it's okay not to have a New Year's resolution. It's okay not to have big goals for your life. It's okay not to have plans you want to manifest. It's okay not to chase your dreams. That path is not for everyone. Some walk the path of unbecoming. They are traveling the road backwards, seeking the core, what is basic and essential, what has been there all along. Though we may have headed the same direction, we may be headed the same direction. Our spirals are mirror opposites. Some walk the path of the visionary, creating abundance and dancing inside a multiplicity of forms. And some walk the path of the serpent owl, becoming more and more naked, shedding layers of fantasy into the ash. Night sky, sitting in the dark and seeing the way the wind moves. They do not walk a line or poise their arrow to the target. They sit at the bottom of the ocean and wait, letting the waves devour them. They are following the pulse of listening to silence, like a tiger in the brush, waiting for existence to strike lightning into the fire of the heart. For this kind, nothing less will do. Some are opening the palms of their hands and unraveling to become less and less until they are no thing, to become the still point and in the center of all, you know who you are. Keep going. 
I think that's really great, right? Sometimes getting back to simplicity is the way forward. So it's not about more sometimes. It's not about ambition sometimes. It's about finding who you are at the center of all. Anyway, welcome to 2021, y'all. We're all still here, I hope. I hope you're doing well. Willie's taking a nap. <laughs> you gonna wake up and tell him bye? Oh, so here's to community. Y'all check us out on Facebook or on Zoom or on Instagram or wherever you wanna find me. And until I see y'all again, what Willie? Y'all be good to each other and Take care of each other. And what, Willie? Oh, it's time for a nap. Peace out, y'all. Bye.